Welcome to Tutorial 4. In this tutorial, we'll be using a data file as an input control for our simulations. This will give us dynamic control over the variables and allow us to use real-world data when simulating. Specifying input parameters for dynamic simulation. First, we'll need to open the layout we created in Tutorial 1, or recreate it and save it as Tutorial 4. As you may recall, this is done by clicking File on the menu bar and selecting Save As. If you aren't in simulation mode after you have saved, click the simulation button and switch over to it. You may be prompted to rebuild the model. If so, rebuild it. If you recall, in Tutorial 1, we manually entered values and used the slider to control the insulin flow rate. However, in this tutorial, we'll be using a file to specify the insulin flow rate throughout the simulation. This will allow us to make numerous changes to the variables without having to repeatedly pause the simulation. For this tutorial, we will control three other input variables along with the insulin flow. Right-click on the Influent stream, select Composition, then Influent Characterization, and add the total COD, total TKM, and free and ionized ammonia to the control window. Next, we will prepare an Excel file that contains all the input data we need. Luckily, there is an example data included with your copy of GPSX. Open the directory where you installed GPSX. Find the Layouts folder and open it. Locate the Tutorials folder and open the directory. You will find an Excel file with the file name Tutorial for Example Data. This file contains the example data we will need. Open the Excel file and save it in the same folder as the Tutorial for Layout to make it easier to locate. Make sure you save the file in the XLS format, as the current version of GPSX is not compatible with the Excel's XLSX format. Notice that the column heading is the cryptic variable name specified in GPSX. To find out the cryptic variable name for each variable, we can simply place the mouse over the variable name in the controller window. You can see that a pop-up shows the cryptic variable name. We now have to import the Excel file to GPSX. To do this, click on the Scenario button on the Simulation control bar and select Configuration. Select the scenario that we are using, in this case the default scenario, and click on the Data Files button. Click on the Add button and add the Excel file. If you look at the Input tab, you will notice that the slider has been replaced with a graphical representation of the input variables. Let's run a 5-day simulation and test it out. Remember, to run a steady state simulation, the steady state box must be checked. If you have done everything correctly, you'll notice that during the run, all the file input controllers will be operating using the data in the spreadsheet we just created. You'll also notice that as the simulation progresses, the value of the influence flow in the input controller will change. The model responds dynamically to the changing input, which can be seen in the increasing effluent solids. There is another method for setting up the data in files to be read by GPSX, and that is by using the data file tool in the GPSX interface. This is useful when you only have one or two parameters to control. Right-click on the layout background and select System, Input Parameters, Physical, and drag the liquid temperature variable to the input control window. Right-click on liquid temperature on the input tab and select Data File. This will open the Data File dialog. This dialog contains two columns. The second column specifies the values for this variable. 
In this case, the liquid temperature, while the first column specifies the time, which the changes in the variable occur. Manually, enter the data values listed in Table 4-1 in the GPSX Tutorial Manual. The next step is to save it. Click the Save button on the Data File window. When saving, you are given the option to add additional description to the data file including the date and a brief description. Note that the file name is auto-generated using these values and changing these values will change the file name accordingly. Now that we are satisfied with the file name, save your file, close the data file window and accept the changes to return to GPSX. Let's run a 5-day simulation and test it out. Remember, to run a steady state simulation, the steady state box must be checked. Notice that as the simulation proceeds, the value of influence flow changes. Plotting measured data along with simulated results. In this section, we'll plot existing output data along with the output results simulated in GPSX. This will allow us to compare real-world values to simulated values. The method to do so is similar to the previous section. Open up a new Excel file and type in the cryptic variable name, units of those variables, and example data as shown in the GPSX tutorial manual, figure 4-8. This is an example data for the total suspended solids in the final effluent. We are going to need time, t, and the GPSX variable name for a variable. Since we don't know it offhand, we simply need to hold the mouse over the variable name in the Output Properties menu. With the file set up correctly and all the data entered, save the spreadsheet and switch back to GPSX. Once you have saved the Excel file, go to the GPSX Simulation Interface, click the Scenario menu and select Configuration. Click on Data Files and add the saved file to this simulation. Accept and close the window. And that's it! Run a 5-day simulation and test it out. Remember, to run a steady state simulation, the steady state box must be checked. You will notice data points appearing on the graph along with the simulated results. Creating a bar chart for steady state condition. In this last section, we will plot a bar chart with existing data and simulated results. First, create a graph of the readily biodegradable substrate within a plug flow tank. Click on the New Graph tab and create a new window. Next, right click on the plug flow tank and select Output Variable then state variables in individual reactors. Drag the readily biodegradable substrate variable under the organic variable subsection to the output window. Repeat the method from the previous section. Create a new Excel file. Type the values listed in the GPSX tutorial manual figure 4-11 and save it. Again, check the cryptic variable name by clicking on the Output Properties button and placing the mouse over the variable. Note that the bar chart type will have already been selected. Also, check the Auto Scale box and click Accept. Then click in the Scenario menu, Configuration, Data Files, and add the saved file. Accept and close the window. Run a zero-day simulation with steady state box checked. The data from the Excel file should also show up automatically as a bar chart. 
Note that the simulation result shows up as a colored bar chart and the example data shows up as a meshed bar chart overlapping the colored bar. And that's it. We have run a simulation with data entered manually into GPSX. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as Cap Networks for preliminary design and costing, Toxcam for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.